Well, a new season is upon us, and of course, we are in the Premier League this season after getting promoted by winning the championship last year with Leicester. A lot to get into, so let's get started right after the intro. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 9 of our Journeyman Save. And we are with our third club. This is episode 9. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you like what you see. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. to get those reminders for daily Football Manager content here on the channel, Monday through Saturday. Let's get into it. Taking a look at the Premier League, newly promoted along with Everton and West Ham, and all three of us are picked to be relegated. Middlesbrough, Leeds, Rotherham down in that bunch as well. And you can see in the best 11, I don't think we have anybody in there. Not surprising. If we take a look at our top players in the league, Vinsa. And Jake Rush. So Jake Rush is our left back. Menza is our right packing right winger. Uh, so that's going on there. Let's jump into transfers because we have made a lot of moves. We have to go back to the end of last season in June. So at the end of the year, we brought in uh, Felix from Man City for $31 million. Felix is a right wing, right, uh, wing back. Uh, he can also play left back. Very pacey. He cost us $27 million at the very end of last season. Remember, he had come in on loan and helped us get promoted, and we brought him on and made that move permanent. Dylan Maxwell was a free. Uh, we've since loaned him out, or we're trying to loan him out. He turned out not to be very good. Uh, we were looking for some depth on our wings for the most part, and he looked pretty good to my scouts, and it looks like they dropped the ball on that one. Eric Graves cost us $17 million from Rotherham. He came up through their system. He's been out on loan, but we pick him up. 10 goals in 31 last year, 19 in 40 for Swindon in the championship. But you can see in the friendlies this season, he's got 10 goals in five starts, and he looks to be the real deal. The big question is who is going to find their themselves out of the starting 11, Mikatin or Cernan? We're going to have to find out because this guy, I think, has to be on the field. Big signing for us this season. And Jan Gomez, I know it says it looks like Ian, but there's a Jan Paveda who is uh, South American playing for Leeds, and he pronounces it Jan. So I'm assuming that's the same. Excuse me. I'm assuming that's the same, Jan Gomez. Uh, center back, left back. 20 years old, four and a half star potential, six foot three. I think he can play center back, very good jumping reach. And, uh, but he can also play on the bat left side. Look for him to be a center back for us. The lack of crossing kind of limits him out wide. And we might need him because if we jump ahead, we do have some outgoing. So, uh, Andre Panchenko, we've moved him on for 15 and a quarter million to Sivaspor. Remember we signed him late last year? I really liked him. He looked okay. But he was pretty demanding when he came in, and he wanted us to strengthen the midfield and didn't like the signing we made, so he whinged about that. And then he was homesick, so he took a month off and just was very, very demanding. So six foot five, really good heading. I was looking forward to seeing him on set pieces. We bought him for 1.3. We move him on to the Turkish Super League for 12 and a quarter. So a nice profit to get rid of a troublemaker. Uh, Christian Langley goes to Aston Villa, six and a half million. 25 year old striker winger. Not great. Not great. Pretty pacey. Uh, I say not great. His his ratings are there. Star ratings not. But 
he was so far down the pecking order behind Mensa on that right side. He just wasn't going to play. I looked at it as a chance to pick up some money. Uh, Eugenio Falsatini, we uh, get him, we loan him out uh, after signing him for $11 million this year. He's more of a future move, 19-year-old Italian center back, can probably do the job now. Uh, but, you know, we loaned him out to Columbus to let him get uh, a lot of starts, regular playing time. So he's in and he's immediately out. They're picking up, I think, 80% of his wages. The hardest move I had to make, and it wasn't the player, it was the club. Uh, Danny Parsons goes to uh, that team. Uh, we don't talk about that team, but for 14 and a quarter million dollars, there were three other clubs in for him, but they were only offering about 11 to 12. So we took the money and sent him. Um, yeah. Not, uh, not a big fan of that. But uh, we we bought him for 13.75 last year, sell him for about a half a million dollar profit. Again, he was just down the pecking order with the promotion. Didn't see a way for him to get into the club. A couple of our younger players out on loan, and then we our last move just happened yesterday in game. Lindorfo, center back, goes to Brentford for 31 million dollars. 30 year old Brazilian. And we signed him for 18 two years ago, so we've made a nice profit on him. And just he he probably could have been in the in the mix for that starting position, but there's enough going on there that I really wanted to pick up some money, and I needed to make a move. I was trying to sell either him or our Japanese central midfielder. Uh, because I needed some money to sign another goalkeeper who has not signed yet. We had to delay his transfer for a week, so that should be coming up here in the next day or two. On the incoming side, we paid $52 million for Masej Kowalski from Everton. He's a right back, but he can play all three back line positions. 24-year-old Polish international with 14 caps to his credit. Three and a half star current ability, four star potential. He can improve a little bit. And you can see he's been playing real solid uh, across all competitions this year. Uh, very good marking, passing. I think he could be a decent center back if we need him. Uh, he can play both wing positions on the back line. So we're going to find a spot. I had him penciled in as my starting right back, but then something else happened that we'll talk about in a minute. Davi Dorca comes in for, on a free from Barcelona. Uh, pretty talented. Again, center back, more for the future, more depth, and you know maybe somebody that we can sell because one of our goals is to buy players to sell for profit. We also bring in Rene Esser from Schalke on a free. Uh, he is a winger, can play all the way across the front three attacking positions. Uh, very solid crossing. Uh, pace, stamina, work rate, technique. Uh, so he really fits the bill. Four and a half star potential. Again, more for the future. Hopefully we can develop him out. Paul Satini, we just mentioned, he comes in from Milan for $11 million. Uh, again, I think he could do the job. I wonder, check something on this. I hate the fact that you can't check scouting some when they're out on loan. Okay, it'll be Gerber probably coming in. Or Kowalski. I'll need to get him into the All right, we'll leave him out on loan. That's fine. So again, we brought him in, and he's out on loan. Kukelis comes in on a free, and again, we've loaned him out. 18-year-old uh, Austrian international left-back, right-back combo. Uh, so we've loaned him out already or for the future. And this guy dropped in from my scouts at the last minute. Man United, an attacking fullback. I don't see a lot of these guys. Three and a half star current, four star potential. He's English, which is something I need to start picking back up. We're capped at 17 foreign players. I've got 15, so I need to really get some English players into my side again. And this guy just looks dominant. So I see him being our starting right back, even though he's probably third on the depth chart behind Kowalski and Felix. But I see him being our starter there. 
and that's going to let um, Kowalski possibly move over into that center back position. If we take a look at our team report, let's look at our three stars. So we've got uh, Elba Tabi in goal. Gibbons is there, but he's only two and a half star. McNeil, Rush, Wheel, Kowalski on the left. McNeil, Rush, Ramsey in the middle. And then Kowalski, Felix, and Clark on the right. Again, I want to probably play Clark there. We'll have to see what that does. Uh, Romain's going to be out on the left side, so that leaves Wheel, Nagami, and Day in the central mid. Mensa on the right with Mikatin, Cernan, and Henson's backing him up. Romain on the left with Chacon, who we signed last year. And then gr the newcomer Graves up front with Mikatin, Cernan, and Gomez Santos is kind of our three star. We drop it down to two star, and you can see. El Batabi has slightly passed up Gibbons. We take a look at him. Batabi is slightly better at shot stopping, and Gibbons has the edge mental speed. Remember, Gibbons played really well last year, but Batabi you know, was our more long-term with five-star potential. Gibbons is already capped out at three-star. So I think we're going to make the move to El Batabi this year. Think we're gonna have to as good a year as Gibbon had last year. And if we take a look at him, only eight goals allowed, eight clean sheets in 14 matches. Nothing wrong with that at all. Got hurt, but El, El Batabi has done pretty well this year. Two goals allowed, five shutouts in six appearances in friendlies, two goals allowed in two under 21 championships. He's only going to get better if he plays. They're saying we should loan him out. Not positive about that. So, we're opening up with Stoke today. No highlights because it's the season opener. There are the friendly results. We looked really good. Uh, we played De Graff Shop with uh, the agreement for the Gerber signing last year. Uh, big wins over Udinese and Brest. So, we open up with Stoke today at home. And I think we're going to give El Batabi this. So we're going to go with Mikatin and Graves up top. I think Graves has to start. We're going to let Mikatin and Cernan duke it out. Gomez Santos will be on the bench as well. Cernan can also fill in for Menza on the right wing. He does get tired, so I think Cernan's going to get a plenty of playing time. Romain on the left, Nagami and Wheel in the mid. We're going to put Kowalski on the left, Clark on the right. McNeil and Ramsey in the center back positions, and El Batabi in goal. Now, you'll notice I made one tweak to the tactic that we used last season. Uh, we always had Menza playing here. I put Romain up on attack just due to the number of assists and goals that he got last year. We've got the option to buy him this year, but I got the extended loan. With the option to buy, it's pretty hefty. I think $31, $34 million, something like that. If he has another season like he did, we're going to buy him. <laughs> I have no doubt. But there was that one thing that we talked about in his, um, in his highlights here that had shown up, and it's consistency, fairly inconsistent. Now, I had seen that. We talked that I had seen a video that that is evidently a hidden attribute that causes them to be, you know, very up and down. They'll have one really good match, and then they'll have two, three, four really poor matches. You know, they'll have an 8.5, 8.2, and then they'll have a 6.4, a 6.2, a 6.5, and then they'll go up and have a 9, and then back down into the 6s. We didn't see that with Romain last year. But because that is something new that I have heard, I wanted to at least be aware of it and wanted to look at him for one more year. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get into it. I'm going to need one squad number. Dean Clark pulls number 41. Braves will be making his debut, as well as... Clark is going to be on a debut. Kowalski, I think, is on a debut. 
and Graves is on a date. We're the home home uh, home team. This one looks like a sellout. I think we had thirty thousand um, season tickets sold. Good header out, but it's right to Silk Player Elgar. Romaine's out on the side, punched away. All right, looks like we're controlling it pretty well in the midfield. Nagami breaks it up the left flank. I'm interested to see up top to Graves. Oh, he held it up and then lays it off. Mikatin takes a crack. It's blocked, and then Wheel puts it a, to the left of the post. But we're looking a little dangerous. But I am hopeful that we can... Uh, Oh my goodness, I think El Batabi made a great save, laying on the ground it appeared. A couple of deflections in there left him out of position, but he still made a stop. We may be a little too aggressive in uh, with this tactic. You know, we were supposed to do well last year. There's Clark. And Kowalski are two left are left and right back. There's Mikatin. Squared in. And first goal of the season goes to Jordan Menza. Eric Graves with the assist. Hope that one loud. I just hit my mic. I apologize. And Mensa with the first goal of the season. Romaine. Nice ball up to Mikatin. Laid it off. Graves had to turn his back to the goal. And instead of trying to turn, he lays it off to Menza contributing in his first match with an assist, and we have taken a 1-0 advantage. Stoke does have 62% possession. That's a little troubling. We'll have to look at that. I'm wondering if we need to go... Uh, El Batabi gets beaten by Victor Vanderbush. Bruno Lopez with the assist, and we're even in the 16th minute. Stutter there in the game. Romaine tried to steal the ball, got beaten, and then Nagami let that ball get through. Kowalski, Nag McNeil, Nagami, all right there in a triangle around, but couldn't stop the play. That's all right. All right, there's Mensa Clark on the overlap. So the reason I put Clark on attack is because Mensa is inverted so he's going to cut inside a lot and so that opens Clark to really be that attacking fullback that he is naturally and get up on overlap all right there's Menza making that big cut all the way to the left side of the field Likaton Kowalski into Romaine and he cannot beat the keeper that was a nice play him. All right, building up again. Big ball over the top. Graves is through, and Healy gets a hand on it, pushes it up into the stands. Setting up a corner. Romaine is there. Here post. I think we've got that set up still. Clark. Beaten to the outside, but boy, he showed some pace to close down. He was way over in that center back position. I don't know. I uh, guess maybe he was back defensively. Potentially. Demand more. A couple of yellow cards in the early going. And another Stoke highlight. Cross in, and the header by Ramon Four. And that's his first goal, and we are in a nil hold. Hmm. Right. We're going to take a look at the tactic at halftime because we are getting beaten all over the pitch, honestly. Whether we need to drop back more to a flat 4-4-2, be a little more defensive. Eh. I think Clark kept him on side and then he beat Clark on the header. Oh, don't, don't let him score again. They do score. Oh, my goodness. Good 
Two goals in four minutes right before the half. Who is it that gets beat? I don't know who was on him. He'll crash back. Not sure who was marking there. Oh, boy. So, possession's not as bad as I thought. Completed passes. All right, let's take a look at the tactic. I think, let's go down to positive. I'm going to drop back to standard on both sides. We're already in regroup. I'm going to turn this off. I don't think we're the better sides now. I'm going to turn that off. Got a deep. Let's drop passing. All right. Pretty, pretty major changes, but let's see if we can pump them up. See if we can get anything going here. Let's encourage them again. Walski and Clark both on yellow cards. Romain starting to lag a little bit. Mikatin's on a 6 3. Oh, look at the ball into Menza, and he puts it in. Mikatin with the assist. I was about to pull Mikatin, but he does a good job there. Tell you what, we are in the 60th minute. And Wheel is furious. Not sure why. But let's pull him off and go with Kevin Day. Then Romaine. Romaine's tired, and he's playing a 6-3. Let's put uh, Cernan out there. Well, the problem is Romaine is left side. I don't have. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Mikeaton out there. We're gonna bring Cernan up top. Now, don't want him to be a playmaker. Let's have him be an inside forward. Hopefully he can do that. It's going to have both of our guys cutting inside. Let's encourage him again. 83rd minute. No highlights there. I'm going to make Day a Mazala. Have him drift to the outside with Menza cutting in. And Dean Clark is not playing well. Let's move Kowalski back over to that side. And let's bring Jake Rush in on that left side. Come on. Bruised ankle for Menza. Gami. Nothing going on. On. Something with the ball. Menza cuts inside. He takes a crack at it. Healy with the save. Not the best option there, I don't think. And we lose this one three to two. Well, many shots and on target. Had the better XG or corners or possession. I don't think we played poorly. Uh, we're going to say not happy. We don't want to get into in too big of a hole here. You know, we need to we need to have some points coming out of the gate. Just to, you know, the goal the goal this year is to stay up. Stay up. All right, well, Bensa, one to three days. Graves makes his debut. Could have been a little bit better. Liverpool's next on the agenda as we travel there. That ends our 21-game unbeaten run. But, you know, that, that happens. All right, well, schedule-wise... 
Why don't we come back pretty quickly? Rotherham is supposed to be down in our neck of the woods. Let's come back for Carabao Cup, whoever that is. We'll look at highlights from that. We'll play Rotherham on camera as we start getting acclimated to the to the team into the Premier League. So we are going to do a qu couple of videos in quick succession here and uh you know before we start spacing it out. So let's get a couple of games under our belt. We'll be back and check out those scores. Guys, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and don't forget Daily FM Football Manager content Monday through Saturday, so hit that notification bell so you stay up to date. Talk to you later. Bye.